and I wrote them down. So let me hand those out to you. These are extra things that we need to just, I think we already did some of them, but I honestly couldn't remember. So some of this might be duplicated. Um, it's not gonna hurt us to do extra. But those of you that are taking the exam, these things are on it. So you wanna make sure So when you look at this and it says four sine, doesn't that mean that this thing goes up four and down four? I think we reviewed that the other day. That's the input two. Yeah, but what else has happened to this problem? It shifted up one. So instead of the high point being at four, the high point is now going to be at five. And the low point, instead of being at negative four, is now going to be at negative three. So your range is negative three to five. That's low to high. You don't have to graph the whole thing. Notice I didn't phase shift it and all that stuff. The question has to do with range. Range is height. How high and low does it go? All right? This will be a calculator problem, this one right here. We want to find the third term. All right, I think we did one of these the other day. What, um, where do I start? How do I, what do I need to do to find the third term of this? Well, I have to figure out the coefficient and I've got other options, but that's one option. There's a coefficient, there's a 2x, and there's a negative 3y. All that's going to be part of the term. You can find the coefficient by doing combinations. 5c5 would be the first term. 5c4, 5c3, what term was I wanting? The third term. Now, it just so happened, guys, that that's a 3. That does not mean third term. That just happened as I counted down, that number's a three. Okay, so that's one way to do it. So I could type it on my calculator, 5C3. Anybody have a different way of doing it? That will always work. That will work if that's how you do it, that's great. What else could you do? You could do Pascal's triangle. And when you do Pascal's triangle, down to the fifth row, that would be the number that you would want. So if you do it this way, you're going to type in 5C3 on the calculator, and it's going to say 10. Okay? That's your coefficient, either from the triangle or from the combination numbers. Now i got to put my exponents on. So again, if I wrote out the whole expansion, all five, I mean, the whole fifth row, all six terms, all the fifth row, this would be 2x to the fifth, fourth, third. Remember how we count down the exponents? So this would be 2x to the third, which means that's a two, because these two have to add up to five. And then I simplify. This is where I need my calculator. So I have 10 times two to the third, which is eight, and then negative three squared, which is nine. Oh, I guess I don't need this time it's 720 x cubed y squared would be the third term of the expansion. 
Oh, I didn't read carefully. It says, what's the coefficient? Okay, the coefficient would be 720. How many ways can these letters be arranged? Oh, you know this one. What do we do? Come up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen of them. So I start with thirteen factorial. And then what do I do? Yeah, so what's repeated? There's an A. So I have two A's, um, two E's. Two E's. Two E's. Two E's. Two E's. Boy, there aren't many repeats, is that it? Yeah. So then I type that in on my calculator. And hopefully, oh, it's a big one, hopefully we can get this. of the sun is 42 and its shadow, meaning the flagpole shadow, is 9.6 feet long. Alright. Alright, where do I put the 42? Find the height of the flagpole. Here's X. Where do I put the 42? All my angles of elevation and depression go right there. Always. And where do I put the shadow? 9.6 on the ground. How do I find X? So, Katoa, absolutely. Could I use something else, like the law of sines or something? You absolutely could. But this is a right triangle, so I'm going to say sine 42. Actually, I'm not going to say sine. I'm going to say tangent 42 equals x over 9.6. Why did I pick tangent? Opposite over adjacent. So x is going to be 9.6 tan 42. I'll just type that in my calculator and that will be the answer to that. Another calculator problem. Find the measure of angle B. Hero's formula? Oh, yeah, that, that. Yes, I absolutely I can do Hero's formula. What what does Hero's formula tell me? Area. Area. So if I wanted the area of this triangle, 100 percent Hero's formula. That's the thing with the radical, remember, with the sine quadrant and all that. This says find angle B. To find a side or an angle, I use the law of sines or cosines. Okay. Area has its thing, but if you're finding sides and angles, you're going to use the law of sines and cosines. So, which is this going to be? Remember how you determine. Check to see. Do you have a pair? No. So, therefore, it's got to be the law of cosines. Remember, a pair would look like this. That's a pair. I don't have that. So I'm going to use the law of cosines, and I'm going to find angle B. So I'm going to have 16 squared equals 10 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 10 times 12. Now, the cos law of cosines is on your reference sheet. It's going to be on your reference sheet, yep. But it doesn't do any good if you don't know when to use it and how to use it. But the formula itself is there. All right, so what do I need to do to solve this now? Be careful, this is a little bit tricky. Well, so I don't know what you mean exactly, but maybe you mean square all these things? Yes. 
also the 16 square, 256, 100, 144, and then I can multiply, that's all multiplied right there, I can multiply that together and get um, 240 cosine b. So I've done all the basic multiplication now, square, 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 and multiply. All right, what now? <coughs> So 256 minus the 100 and minus the 144 is going to, that bringing these over is going to give me 12 equal to negative 240 cosine b. All right, then what? Divide. So cosine b ends up equaling 12 over negative 240. So second cosine 12 divided by negative 240, I got 92.87 degrees for angle B. So my job today, just like last week, is to jog your memory. But I'm looking you in the eye and saying these problems are on the exam. Along with the ones we did the other day, are also on the exam. All right, six. What? This is a no calculator problem. What am I doing in problem six? No calculator. What am I doing? What does this mean? That's right. I don't know who said it, but amen to you. This means find the angle. We're finding the angle. All we know about it is that it's cosine is root 3 over 2. <coughs> so adjacent over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2, which you should recognize that. That's a 1 right there. So this, I, this is no calculator, so it's got to be right. This is how big of an angle? 30 degrees. So the answer to the question is 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians, 180 divided by 6 pi over 6 radians. So if it says answer, or it doesn't say how to answer, then answer how you want. But it could say answer in degrees and it could say answer in radians. So you want to make sure you do that appropriately. Okay? Number seven, I think we did some matrix ones the other day, but I don't think we found the inverse. So, here we go. Anybody remember how to find an inverse? Maybe we did this, I can't remember, let's do it again. How do we find an inverse? <coughs> Step one. So we do some messing around with our matrix. So I'm going to make a new matrix by taking these two and switching them. And these two stay where they are, but if they're positive, they become negative, and negative becomes positive. Okay, good, but there's more. What else? Find the determinant. So the determinant. This is a simple little thing to find the determinant. It's one times five, negative three times two, and subtract them. So it looks like our determinant is five plus six, 11. Right? And then what do we do? We divide all these numbers by 11. And that actually is the inverse. Sometimes things reduce, that one doesn't. So that would just be the right there. Now take that, so that's the answer. That's just it right there. Now it says take that guy and multiply him times this one. Right? 
So how does that work? First, we have to figure out we need to do it. What are the dimensions in this guy? Two by two. Two by two. two, by two. And this guy's two by three. Two rows, three columns. Yes, we can multiply. And the answer is going to be another two by three, which has two rows and three columns. Right? So here we go. We're going to multiply. Now we have to fill in all those blanks. So this one, row one, column one. So one and two, one, negative one. Multiply <coughs> each pair and add them up. So it looks like that's going to be negative one. And then row one, column two, we're working our way across. Looks like that one's gonna be four, right? All right, go ahead, keep going. I gotta fix my attendance real quick, keep going. Here's the point, negative 2, 3. Angle in standard position, right? There's your angle. And your job is to find the cosine. So we're going to drop a perpendicular straight down. And if this is the point, negative 2, 3, then we ought to be able to find the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is root 13. So I do our Pythagorean theorem. And we want the cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the answer is negative 2 root 13 over 13. Problem took longer to write and read than it did to do. That's a pretty easy problem. All right. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right. Number nine. What does that squiggly line mean? Sum. So I'm going to be adding. Now, I have formulas. I'm going to have a reference sheet. There's going to be four or three formulas on that that add. These are the adding formulas. Before I can do the problem, I have to figure out which of my formulas is the one I'm going to use. And how do I determine that? by figuring out what pattern is represented by this set of numbers. Is it arithmetic or geometric? Oops, I need the rest of my problem. So, the first number I'm adding, I get by plugging in one. So when I plug in one here, what is this equal? Okay. So the first number I'm adding is negative one. Now I'm gonna plug in two. Okay. One. Now I'm gonna plug in three. 
could keep on plugging as long as I want to until I get to 15. That's the last number I'm plugging in. So I'm going to not do all of them because I think I can see what's happening. When I plug in 15, I get 27. So that is the list of numbers that I am adding up. Arithmetic or geometric, that list right there. Arithmetic, here's my formula. How many am I adding? That's what N is. N is the number of terms that you are adding. How many are you adding? 15. So the sum of 15 terms is going to be 15 over 2 times the first term, which you already figured out is negative 1, and the 15th term, which you already figured out is 27. So that will do it for me. 195. find the exact cosine of 75. So we need a formula for this too. I'll give it to you. You all have it on your sheet. And how do we find the cosine of 75? Anybody remember? What would add the two that go up to it? Yep. So what would that be, Paige? Uh, I would do 60 and 15. 15 except 15 is not special. Remember, my specials are 30, 60, 45, and 30. There we go, 45 and 30. So that's exactly what you want to do. You want to break that angle down, and you're always going to be able to do it if we're doing this without a calculator. It has to be real. So we're going to break it down into 45 plus 30. Then you will look on your reference sheet. Let me see what letters. I got on there. Uh, U and V, it looks like. So there's a on your reference sheet. It says cosine. <coughs> looks like that. That's what the formula looks like right off the um, paper. So first of all, it's cosine. And it's plus, so we'll be using the minus in the formula. So my u and my v, so I'm going to have cosine 45, cosine 30, minus sine 45, sine 30. All right, then what do I have to do? figure out all these values. Plug them in. So 45 looks like that. And 30 looks like that. Oh my gosh, do I need to know that? Yes, those are your special right triangles. You are now all right, so cosine 45. Now, technically, it's 1 over root 2. I'm going to write that as root 2 over 2. And the sine is the same. 30, I need the cosine is root 3 over 2. The sine is 1 half. So remember this guy, if you get a whole bunch of these, it's root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4 top times top bottom times bottom. And then we put it together, root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Remember doing that? We get a whole bunch of those. And they always come out something like this. Okay? Now, that's it for the special stuff that I wanted to make sure we got. Let's go back to our review sheets now. And 
I can't remember quite honestly how far we got. And how far we still need to go. So I remember we started on the first one, didn't we? divided by 10, multiplied by 110. That's my ratio. It is infinite, dot, dot, dot. I have a formula for that. It is first term divided by 1 minus the ratio. So that's 0.06 over 0.9. Now my job was to write this as a fraction. I'm getting close but I'm not supposed to have decimals in my fraction. So I'll rewrite that by moving the decimal. Everybody good with 690s? Yeah. That is not the answer though, because remember this guy? He has to go back in. He's part of the problem. He just couldn't be part of the formula. So now I gotta take that 690s and add in my four tenths. So I'll get a common denominator. So 90 is my denominator and my numerator is 42. And I can reduce that to 21 over 45. Now I want to look at um, 27, these limits, it's really hard to get partial credit on these limit problems, and they're so easy, we ought to be able to just figure this out pretty easily. What's the limit of that top one? This is 27A, and the limit is 3 fifths, remember? Three -fifths. What's the limit of this one? This is a different kind of problem. What's the limit? Zero. The limit is zero. And it's zero because that number right there is less than one. If this had been five fourths, then there would be no limit because that number is zero. <coughs> All right, number 28. Okay. 
You will not have to grasp this. I don't know if you remember that, when we grasp these whole things, you don't have to do that. But you do have to answer some questions about it. So let's run through the questions. The questions you'll have to answer are uh, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, poles, <coughs> x-intercept, and y -intercept. My guess is you won't have to answer all those, but maybe I'll just pick a couple. Give me the vertical asymptotes and the x-intercept, or something like that. So let's practice all of them so that we are prepared. What do we do first? Factor. First thing we do is factor. Now in this case, it's really not going to do me any good because why? Nothing cancels. My hope is always when I factor that something will cancel out. Nothing did, which simply means that we don't have any holes. Remember? If these had matched, they didn't. But if these had matched, I would cross them out. I would have a hole where x is 1 because that's the 0 I canceled out. And then I would plug that 1 back in, and I would get 2 over 4, 1 half. And that's where my hole would be. But that only happens if you can cancel. I couldn't, so I have no hole. Okay, so what do I have? Well, I have vertical asymptotes. Where are they? There's two of them actually. Where are they? X equals negative 3, x equals 3. Wherever the denominator is 0. And if you don't remember all this, you probably should like write that down over the site. Denominator can't be zero. This is where the denominator is zero. Where do the horizontal asymptotes come from? We just talked about it right here. Where do they come from? They're the limit. And the limit is y equals one for this problem. How about intercepts? How do I find those? X-intercepts and y-intercepts. Where do they come from? What? One comes from the numerator. Those would be your x-intercepts. So if you let x be negative 1, you get 0. If you let x be 1, you get 0. Those are your x-intercepts. They're from the numerator. How about a y-intercept? Where does that come from? Plug in zeros for all the x's. You can actually do that back at the beginning if it's easier. You can certainly do it here. You can do it here, put in zero for all the x's. I think I said that wrong. Put in zero for all the x's. So it looks like that's going to be one ninth. And we've answered all the questions. Like I said, you're not going to have to sketch all that, but you are going to have to identify some information. All right. I have been through, I think, I work carefully, I've been through it all. So I'm going to, I want you to look at practice or review number two. And I'm going to hand back some papers, my last set of papers to you. And we can go over these. And you can, um, um, then ask me whatever for a review to you that you need to ask me. Yeah. 